And then if you have time, we'll do the... the so, it's going very well. Um, first, first question I have to ask you is if you know about the original version of this piece, I'm sure you do now, the, the Tchaikovsky's first version of the piece, which was uh, um, with eight variations. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's much better. <laughs> and please play that version now that you've learned this version, because um, the thing is that Tchaikovsky actually didn't like the changes. I mean, sometimes changes are, you know, people improve things, but in this case it was improved by Fitzenhagen. And he wasn't happy. Although Fitzenhagen was a wonderful cellist, and a good composer himself, I, Tchaikovsky didn't really like the changes. So you can buy the original now, it's in Peter's edition, and uh, it's no, no problem, everybody can play that. So, uh, and the order is different, you know, the, the order of the variations, it comes in, it's a different shape of the piece. Good, but the beginning, essentially, it's the same music, so it's not such a thing. Now, my feeling, the theme is, is a tricky thing to play, isn't it, really? <laughs> um, and it's a little bit heavy, the way you play, for, for my taste. And we have to find, I mean, it's got a sound as if in the Mozart style, you know, Mozart world. Um, and, and occasionally we go into more romantic style, but basically, the, the whole picture should be a little bit more... And there's no repeat in the original. It goes on. Gliss on a rest. 
Did you ever wonder about that? <laughs> so what is, what is that? Glissando on a, on a 16th rest, you know. But I, I think what it is, is you know, like when you sing, maybe you can go bum, ba, ba, bum, a little bit of something. Um, and the open A string sounds a bit fat. Yeah. So what I like to do is um, second phrase. Just...
way is that a little bit you're pulling back with your elbow here. I want you to come right around. Because after all, if you were an opera singer, those are the notes that they pay a lot of money for. <laughs> <laughs> Cellist, nobody cares. But to say it's an hour, oh, you know, you want to have a really nice sound. Imagine. 
imaginary paper, if I have paint on my elbow, and I'm making a circle. So just try and open strings very, just slowly, just to get that feeling. So, <laughs> play just this and stop yes exactly because that's you wouldn't play the theme (laughs) 
Uh -huh. If you do this bowing, maybe find a balance point of the bow, not too high, but more in the middle part. Yeah. So it's, al it's almost just a. Uh, so. Try the same thing, those two fingers are the ones, yeah, and I want you to feel that they're ta -ta -ta -ta, that they're active. Ah. You see what I mean? They need to be, each one has to help. Yeah, otherwise it's a bit uh, wah wah wah. You know, it's like, uh, I want. Very good, that's the sound. It's not much bow. And sometimes I play. It depends how you feel. You know, you, you have both in your. What's important? What's important is the crescendo. Really, that's really important. So this is really, I find this a very interesting bowing, the whole thing, because we want to be able to not be hard on the so, so suave, you know what I mean, suave, kind of elegant and, and airy. Just play me this little thing, F sharp key. Just so. And can you play, uh, just as an exercise, uh, pianissimo, crescendo, Forte and back. So you have a using the, So you have a feeling of, of freedom. Yeah. So, so exactly. And that's how you must feel that when you're playing it. So you have a, So phrasing, obviously. La da 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 You know, but they take over. La -di -da -dum. And I would like you to try to play again a little bit more in this area and longer. Lyrical. Yes, that's better. Freer. You know what I mean? So it's not. It's a. It's not a difficult place. We've had a lot of tricky things to do, and there you can relax more. Um, okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, take your time. So, so let's go from your da da the second time. You know what? The second time is suggest that we do separate bows because it's more of a crescendo. you down you see it, is, it makes it heavy like instead of on the tiptoes you know that, that's the difference uh, and so it's worth I mean this is something you'll practice for a long time anyway you know it's worth trying a new new way when you did it for a moment it was immediately better in my opinion so uh, in fact here's a good example I mean here 
doesn't matter if I'm like that. But when I play, um, you see, I changed. You see, I immediately changed. I'm back to my tiptoes again. For the up bow business, uh, I would suggest, as I said before, don't go too far up here, so that you have to go wah wah, but keep it in the, in the, uh, it just, there is a, a good place on every bow that balances nicely for that. Exactly. Well, you, you don't have to work so hard, you know, it's, it's natural for the bow to do that. And especially if you have more, so you can, re you know, that the, the slur is more than the, uh, I'm sure you can do that very well, just try. Just try. It's nearly very good. I have the feeling it could be clearer, just a bit clearer, you know, more pa 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 pa, -pa more elegant. Mm -hmm. Maybe finger. Maybe better. Yes, because they have groups. So that's another little thing. Anyway, great. Now, next variation. Can you play again the link? Da -da -dee. See if you can remember. Da -da -dee -da -da. Go right through. Yeah, and I would again also keep my left. I keep the left hand singing. Don't stop the vibrato. Just no, a little bit different bowing. It, it's a little bit less when you play. This kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. The other one sounds like a bowing, you know. Dee da da da. Continue. Yeah. Now, I must ask you a question. Why do you play in one bow? When it's when the whole music is about la la la, la la la, and this is a variation of that, which is da da la da. You see, it's that's why. Why did you change it? Not sure. Try it as written, because it, it, it's to show every even this is you know the C major variation. It's all about the upbeat and the downbeat. You know, it's the, just very nice variations on that. And also, we need more accent on the on the down bow. You know. Also seriously, this thing tempo of the theme. It helps because if we play we play and it's not so fast. You see, it's still it's rather than Piumasa, which is you often hear that, you know, and it's it's okay, you know, it can be it's very Bravura, but let's try and play it really as written. And I have a good fingering for you. 
So it's only one shift. Put my thumb on and then and then one. And the bowing, the bowing, uh, yes, the bowing one and three. So. Do it, do it one more time slowly, just to get the feeling. Okay. Yeah. So from here, you don't have to think very much until there. Just this next shift. Let's do it. Uh, I would do it because the other one is really difficult and not very clean. So I would abandon, abandon that now. Um, interesting uh, point that in the original version, the dynamic is that the first scale is, is um, no crescendo, and the second is, and the third no, and the fourth yes. So it's not always a big crescendo, which I think is rather nice, especially if you make a big point of it and make a diminuendo uh, make it very sort of like a, a champagne you know then, then this one. you see it also goes with the with the that goes further bum bum bim bum bum goes right there down and then and then cheeky maybe and then, yeah. sorry, yeah. and then, and in the original is a trill, which is nice because it's kind of in this Mozarty style with trills and things. You know. So that, that you can do it in this version too. Maybe play the first one a little bit more throwaway and the second one with big bravura. Let's try that. I mean, if this doesn't work, don't worry. But now it's difficult to just do it. But it's just for the color, you know. And try, uh, think about the theme. Hold it a little bit, don't rush. I would suggest, say, make even more of the accent, because that's the, the feature now, you know, that we're looking at this little part of the theme. Just playing it without piano once, just the first two phrases. And the next one. That's it, that's it. So you have really... That's the way. Okay, good. Uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, maybe I, I'm going to hear this, actually, this... Little cadenza. Here, <clears throat> much more operatic. Uh, sing right through the long notes. I feel that you were dying a little bit on the long notes. So, uh, I'll play once. Um, you see, every, every time it's a recitative, isn't it? You can imagine the harpsichord. Yeah. And the singer is singing out here. Yeah. You, you play this. Yeah. <coughs> Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, we have to use the fourth finger. So we have to boost it a little bit and, and work harder on the fourth finger vibrato. It's a little bit restrained, you know? So, um, you know, again, when, when I <coughs> have to tr compensate because it's fourth finger, not second finger, <coughs> I, I give all the weight of, of my hand and arm into the note. So I feel really good contact. I try to... So, if I should... See? You know, I, I can, giving maximum, I'm not holding backwards, I'm going into it. That's much better, really. or anything you know, uh, when you're here see the, I'm relaxing these fingers I'm not making this I, I, there's a little bit of that in your hand I, I'm keeping them and keeping them close to the fourth and so on see this kind of position and you're a little bit holding back and that it makes the hand tight. So just remember, it's not just the fourth finger, it's the others that uh, One more time. Good. Now, let's look at the bow a little bit in, in all of this. Um, as you go through the bow, I would like you to think about using more hair to the, to the end. So from middle to end, I actually turned the bow a little bit, so... You see? I help by rotating with my thumb. I'm just doing this. Try that. Yes. And now the next one. More, more, more. Hey, more hey. Yeah. And the last one. Exactly. You have to use everything you have. You know, it's not no good just pressing and hoping. You have to use all, all the fibers here. So, and, and you know, it's not doing anything here. It's just here, in the turning in the thumb. So, uh, good. And it was much better now because you vibrated not just the long notes, but the little notes in between, which is much better. So, can you continue? <laughs> something like uh, the theme on the C string. It's no good playing with a cello in this angle because you, you can't give the weight of the arm on top of the string. You, know, you have to work very hard here and the result is nothing. You know. But with a small change of the angle you suddenly have a great instrument. It sounds like, oh, yes, now I, I hear it. Can you put... Put your right knee behind the cello. Yeah, exactly. So you have support that you, so the instrument is resting on your right knee. Yeah. And can you do something? Yeah, something. Just bring your foot behind. So yes, but what, uh, yeah. I mean, because I use a longer pin, it's easier. But um, you see, you see how I'm just doing. So yeah, I, I do that so that I've got. <laughs> Can you also use this new technique with a bow? See, I'm completely flat on this. So. Yeah, now play without doing that. Play the same two notes. Yeah, it's much harder work and not really happening. 
And so what, do you, what are you doing is, is, is really turning it, you, now a uh, new way, is re really getting a little bit more exaggerated. Like sometimes when you play on the A string, you want to be like this. But here too. All the way through. Can you stand up one time and play play the same notes like this? Like a double bass player. Yeah. See what I'm what I'm thinking about is how my body is the weight of my arm is resting the, on top of the string near the bridge without effort. So I look I look at this angle standing up. And I sit down, and I say, okay, how can I adapt that? See, here, this is very easy. I mean, I'm not saying the double bass is easy, but it's actually very natural, the most natural thing to do, to stand and play. I, I like it playing. Have you, you play like that sometimes? It's nice, because it's so, you know, you're not so involved. You know? The instrument isn't pressing against you. It's, it's, it's good, it's relaxing too. And then, and then you can see, how can I feel like that when I'm sitting down? So, it's another. Yeah, try to be as near the bridge as possible, you see. The do, do it again, there's something missing. I, I just want to see what it is. Yeah, you know what it is? It's this. It's missing. No, it's there. Yeah, the difference between this and that. Because, when I, you see, look. I've got this uh, pressure, pronation of the arm, of the hand, into this verb. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. But now I'll try with the sit down again. And then just try the. frustrated with the sound on the C string. Like it could be, it sounds a bit woolly, you know, it needs to be more intense when you're in this sort of situation. All right, so there's some ideas. Now let's look at this one. Actually, first, could we look at number four? Because I want to do a little bit more in this, uh, like in the theme, a bit more lifting of the bow. See, this is important. so dainty, so, so elegant and very uh, fragile, really. Yeah. So, uh, and, and it's nice when these are a bit cheeky. You know, they can be late and play with it, you know. Try again. Nice. And now sing as much as possible. Right. It was great when you went up. But not so great when you come down. <laughs> Harmonic. Yeah. yeah, but the trouble trouble is I hear a sort of leader uh, word up. That's all right. Try the second finger on C sharp. You'll be much happier. Not, not here. Uh. Yeah, and, and in your 
child's piano, is it? Uh, how's it written? Yeah, it should be forte. It, in the original, it's for, actually forte. So it's another of those expensive operatic notes. Big applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's not... <laughs> You can really play it, you know, not a harmonic. That's it. And you see, this position of the hand is, is always more safe than this one. That's why I like, whenever I play these arpeggios, I put second finger rather than first because it turns my hand round. But, uh, I Now let's go back to number three. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, not number three, sorry, uh, the slow one, C major. The previous one, sorry, I, I'm, I'm jumping around here. So, that one. Always up bow down bow, like ya da da. So you see what I mean? The phrasing goes always through down bow. So it's so a sustain through this to But um, maybe don't die totally. You know, not too much. Stop. But I'm sure the singer would continue a little bit more. Sadly, we have to stop because it's such an interesting piece. I, mean, I didn't hear the end, but I'm sure it's great. Um, in these scales, you know, the big four octave scales, um, 
it might be a good idea to accent the note after the tonic. So, so you, uh, if you play and so you, the, is it the D sharp in the second one? Do, do which one ever one like F sharp on the third. <laughs> it's always the note you shift, the new note that so, so you have a Maybe don't start quite so slowly as you do, but this is also good. Yeah, try this fingering um, at the end. One, two, three, one, two, three, three. Yeah, it's. I think you hear clearer. Bravo. It is better, isn't it? It's interesting. Uh, the other one works. We're used to one, two, one, two, one, two, three. But also. Yeah, and you can play a real note at the end of both. Don't play a harmonic. Play a real note. Do slowly. Yes. That's a... You know what it is? It slows me down. It stops me rushing. It's interesting. But, uh, I have to play with the notes. Very good.